Our game hasn't started yet. Remember, you can follow us on Instagram for our complete broadcast schedule and more. This broadcast will begin in just a few minutes. This is the My Town Sports Network. Our game hasn't started yet. Remember, you can find our coverage on your smart TV with our Roku and Apple TV apps. We'll begin our broadcast in just a few moments. Please stay tuned. Thanks for tuning in to the My Town Sports Network. The game you're tuning in for isn't quite ready yet. Remember, you can follow other games with the MyTown TV smartphone app. Download it today. Our broadcast will begin shortly. Thank you for tuning in to the MyTown Sports Network. Our game hasn't started yet. Remember, you can follow us on Instagram for our complete broadcast schedule and more. This broadcast will begin in just a few minutes. This is the My Town Sports Network. Our game hasn't started yet. Remember, you can find our coverage on your smart TV with our Roku and Apple TV apps. We'll begin our broadcast in just a few moments. Please stay tuned. Thanks for tuning in to the My Town Sports Network. The game you're tuning in for isn't quite ready yet. Remember, you can follow other games with the MyTown TV smartphone app. Download it today. Our broadcast will begin shortly. Thank you for tuning in to the MyTown Sports Network. Our game hasn't started yet. Remember, you can follow us on Instagram for our complete broadcast schedule and more. This broadcast will begin in just a few minutes. This is the My Town Sports Network. Our game hasn't started yet. Remember, you can find our coverage on your smart TV with our Roku and Apple TV apps. We'll begin our broadcast in just a few moments. Please stay tuned. Thanks for tuning in to the My Town Sports Network. The game you're tuning in for isn't quite ready yet. Remember, you can follow other games with the MyTown TV smartphone app. Download it today. Our broadcast will begin shortly. Thank you for tuning in to the MyTown Sports Network. Our game hasn't started yet. Remember, you can follow us on Instagram for our complete broadcast schedule and more. This broadcast will begin in just a few minutes. This is the My Town Sports Network. Our game hasn't started yet. Remember, you can find our coverage on your smart TV with our Roku and Apple TV apps. We'll begin our broadcast in just a few moments. Please stay tuned. Thanks for tuning in to the My Town Sports Network. The game you're tuning in for isn't quite ready yet. Remember, you can follow other games with the MyTown TV smartphone app. Download it today. Our broadcast will begin shortly.
Thank you for tuning in to the MyTown Sports Network. Our game hasn't started yet. Remember, you can follow us on Instagram for our complete broadcast schedule and more. This broadcast will begin in just a few minutes. This is the My Town Sports Network. Our game hasn't started yet. Remember, you can find our coverage on your smart TV with our Roku and Apple TV apps. We'll begin our broadcast in just a few moments. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this My Town TV presentation of Greenup County Musketeer Basketball. Tonight, the Greenup County Musketeers welcome in a team from West Virginia, the Tulsa Rebels. I am Ryan Parker. I'll be on the broadcast for you here tonight, along with my friend Brian Barber. Good to be here. Great night for basketball. Early December. A lot of these teams still feeling, feeling their way through the Early part of the schedule, but Greenham County, they, we know they've been tested. Greenham County been tested a lot in the first couple weeks, had a lot of games in the first couple weeks. They come into tonight's game with a record of uh, three and four, looking to go 500 now. And it'd be a good <coughs> point in the season to kind of get a reset, go 500. Yep. And, uh, you know, we got tough games coming up again next week over at Wheelersburg on Tuesday night. Well, but yeah, it, it don't get any easier. I mean, you go down the schedule, you can look into, you know, down the road to uh, Cabell Midland and, and – Louisville Pre Pleasure Ridge Park. I mean, of course, this team's going to go to Charleston, South Carolina over the holidays. So, yeah, this team is they're going to be a battle tested come March. Yeah, this team's going to be ready to go for the district games, the ones we're all looking forward to here at Greenup and across the region. The 63rd district is always a very competitive district. That along with the 61st district this year, I think going to be some really good tournaments in particular. Yeah, for sure. We saw a good team from the 64th last night in Fairview, and they, you know, we've seen some talent they've got in the uh, Tamil Smith and and, you know, and, of course, uh, Steve Day. So don't count those guys out either. No, I wouldn't count Fairview out of any game after seeing the performance uh, they put on last evening here to Mel Smith dropping 30 points, eight three-pointers. Fairview as a team had 15 three-pointers wow. on Greenham County. Yep. Amazing. Great shooting night. Greenham County was – I don't want to say they were lucky to get the win, they, but they earned that win last night. They, uh, of course, their M.O. is they're, they're tough. They're, they, they're a battle test. They don't give up. They're never out of it. That's one thing I like about this team. They're never, ever out of it. They never give up. Yeah, really fun team to watch. There's no doubt. Tulsa comes into this game with a record of 2-0. and oh. They have wins so far over Lincoln County, West Virginia, and the West Logan Christian Academy, Brian. Well, that Lincoln County, that's a, it's a uh, Division II win. Or, you know, yeah, Division II. West Virginia only has three classes. But Lincoln County, that's a good win. It's a pretty big school. So, again, only, only two games compared to Graham County, you know, being seven. But, Again, uh, I expect them kind of to play their game tonight and, uh, you know, work the ball around, be a little more patient like they have been. And, again, get off to a good start again tonight, and that's going to be a big key like it was the other night. they got to get off to a good start, and then they can just kind of set, set it from there. All right, so we have about 12 minutes to go until tip-off in this one. So we'll take our first break here on the pregame show. We'll be right back to talk about these teams a little bit more in-depth. We'll be right back here on My Town TV. I've been a member for a little over 46 years. They're very family oriented. Um, you just walk in and everybody's friendly. They talk to you, you know, they know you by name. You know, you may not go in there for a day or you know, several years and I think you, you go in there and you still feel like family. Recently we refinanced our home and it felt like it was right because we trust the people that work there. This is my people.
at Buffalo Wild Wings, the deals don't stop. Buy one, get one half off Wing Tuesdays. Buy one, get one free bonus Thursdays. And three to six dollar happy hour deals from three to six p.m. every weekday. Only at Buffalo Wild Wings. struggle to concentrate. You don't understand why your mood swings and your energy is down. You're asking yourself why you have feelings of guilt, worthlessness, or even suicidal thoughts. Your mind is screaming, help. Pathways is listening. Call or chat with our crisis helpline now at pathways-ky.org. We're back here at the greenhouse in Lloyd, where Greenup County is warming up to our left. And Tulsa is warming up to the right. Tulsa with some nice uh, blue uniforms with orange trim. Yep, and Florida or Boise State, take your pick. Yep, that looks like the Gators or the, uh, boy, I tell you, you stumped me there, Boise State. Uh, yeah, that, that, that kind of. I know these team mascots. Broncos, is it? Broncos, Broncos yeah. I believe it is Broncos. Yeah, they got the home of the Smurf turf out there. <laughs> yeah. The blue field, football field, and the oh. Statue of Liberty play when they beat Oklahoma back in 2008, I believe it was, and they shocked Oklahoma. That was a fantastic game. Uh, I do remember that. Uh, what we do know about Tulsa under head coach Brian Stacy, uh, number 13, Parker Watts, he's their leading scorer coming into this game. And it looked like the other captains they sent out to center line was Bryson Muncie, a senior, six foot four, 215 pound senior, actually, Bryson Muncie, big boy, and Josh. Hoffmeister. Yeah, Hoffmeister. Yeah, they got some size out there. This is a team that's uh, you know, just, you know, look, look, first look at them. They look uh, very competitive. Yeah, they, they passed the eye test. There's no question about that. Greenup County, uh, they'll probably go, well, well, I know they will go with their same starting five that, that we've seen all season long. Seems like Greenup County really has started to settle into their roles this season. Uh, you know, uh, right. with, with Bryson Chanley and uh, Eli Adkins kind of leading the way on the offense. They're the leading scorers on the team, and rightfully so. They've stepped up their games immensely since last season. Right, and I thought, you know, me and you've been talking all season long through these first six, seven games. That, you know, Graham kind of needed that clutch go-to guy when things got, you know, when their backs got against the wall. And, you know, I think Eli Atkins' last two games has kind of been that guy. I'm not saying he's the, for sure the guy, but he's developing into that kind of player they need when they need a bucket. Uh, he's a little, his little you know, rise up, 10, 15 footers. It's hard to stop that shot. If he's feeling it, it's almost a, a you know a gimme for him. So again, maybe I, maybe that's the guy that's going to be the go-to guy from here on out. Yeah, very well could be. Uh, Greenup County, of course. Uh, Casey Gammon has assumed kind of the point guard duties for the most part. There's been some games we've seen them move Eli Atkins out there. You know, when the right. situation's got a little bit stressful. But Casey Gammon, he's been put to the test as a sophomore against some really good competition early in the season out of the point guard position. Right. He's, he's a kid you want out there at the point. You know, he's a kid that's you know, athletic all the way around. He's a great baseball player as well. Um, he can handle the rock really good. And sometimes he don't score a lot of points, but he gets the little things done that don't really, you know, you don't really see on the stat sheet. But, again, he's, he's, he's coming along good. I mean, I tell you what, the more the season goes along, if he can really keep improving the way he is right now, look out. This team can be really, really, really good. Yeah, I think he really could be one of the keys to the team. Uh, you know, get his three-point shot going. He has right. a very good form and uh, shot the ball pretty well from three and then th from the field last season. He has the ability to do so. He's got to get, uh, well, like I said, he's been tested uh, defensively by some really good opponents early in the season. And when you're handling the ball out there a little bit more, it, it uh, takes a lot of your energy out for those uh, set shots. Yeah, it does. And, you know, I was going to say, you know, some people might, might be thinking, you know, if your game is keep shooting that shot, you know, if you're a shooter, you got to shoot out of a slump. I don't necessarily think he's in a slump right now, and I think he's a confident player. I think he's, I don't think it's lack of confidence. I just think it's a lack of not getting a good shot, and that's good. That's one good thing about it. You got to be a good basketball team. You got to take good shots. You have a good shot selection. Take open shots, high percentage shots, and Gammon doesn't really take many bad shots. So, yeah. you know, if you can just keep keep that up, look out. And like you said, keep that three point shot in your, in your pocket and ready ready to go at all times. And I talked to his uh, dad, assistant coach Jason Gammon, before the game, and uh, he's really putting an emphasis 
on defense tonight, and obviously that's something yeah. you do after you give up 15 three-pointers the night before. That would be the tendency to put some emphasis on defense right, tonight yeah. and going forward because he feels like, and, and head coach Corey Allison too, feels like you know, to reach the full potential of where this team could go this year, they've got to lock down the defense a little bit more. Yeah, you're, yeah, good point. That's true. That's true. And, and again, you know, this, this this Fairview team last night, they don't make anybody feel like that when you hit that many threes. And, and again, hats off to them. And that was what a performance that was. But again, Graham County able to you know to out, outdo that performance and win the game last night. Very very good win last night for Graham yeah. County. And, and yeah. I think they'll keep that momentum going over tonight here at home against these uh, against this tough Tulsa team. So again, I can't wait to get this thing underway. Yeah, big crowd here on the Greenup County side. Uh, and Tulsa has brought a good contingency from West Virginia as well across the way. Sure have. We have the pep band in the end zone. We have the cheerleaders who are headed to the state championship uh, tomorrow. George Rogers Clark talked to Sean Boggs, his daughter, of course, a cheerleader for the Greenup County Musketeers. And uh, he's really looking forward to heading down to George Rogers Clark tomorrow and watching the uh, Greenup County cheerleaders try to bring home the state championship. Yeah, right. I like that. I like the way you say George Rogers Clark. Everybody's, everybody's too lazy now. They say GRC, you know. <laughs> Some people still call him Clark County, but, you know, again, yeah, Greenup County. They're, what a synonymous name with uh, high school cheerleading. I mean, they're, they're known not just throughout this region, but throughout the whole country, throughout the world. No with doubt. Uh, cheerleading capabilities. So, uh, we wish them the best of luck. I hope the girls bring home, bring home the, uh, bring home, bring home the uh, hardware. Hardware, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Four and a half minutes from tip-off here. We'll take our final break before this one. Here on the pregame show on My Town TV. Better banking brings better opportunity. If you're looking for a loan, I encourage you to shop local. At Kentucky Farmers Bank, we make our decisions right here in our office. We give you the loans that you need and the personal service that you deserve. Kentucky Farmers Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. We take pride in our schools. And at King's Daughters, we take pride in being part of the team. With student athlete care from the sidelines to our comprehensive orthopedics program. With walk-in hours in Ashland and Portsmouth that make seeing a provider easier than ever. Our team is delivering faster diagnosis and treatment, getting our student athletes back in the game and back to what they do best. Orthopedics at King's Daughters. Hi, I'm Clay with Pollux Jewelers, and this uh, school season we want to wish all of our local teams the, the best. We want you to know that we're here for you in any of your gift giving needs, and uh, good luck to everyone this fall and next spring. Back here at the greenhouse where the Greenup County Musketeers are just about set to get this one underway against the Tulsa Rebels. Tulsa's 2-0. Greenup County's 3-4, looking to go 4-4 four and four and even things up before next week's big struggles against, uh, well, Tuesday night, My Town Radio. Myself and Brian will be on the call over at Wheelersburg, Ohio, and that'll be one to look forward to as that's always a big game mm -hmm. between these uh, rivals right across the river. Yeah, pretty much directly across the river. That's Wheelersburg. I mean, of course, they're known a little more as a football school right now. But again, they're a they're a big school, and they take all their sports very seriously over there in Wheelersburg. It's there's something else. Don't know that I've ever seen a bad Wheelersburg team in any sport. Yeah, you're you're right. That's a good that's a good point. I mean, again, I mean, when you're over there in that town, you can you can feel it. I mean, they really back that team. These teams heading to their respective benches with about a minute to go before we will. Well, we'll have the National Anthem first. Uh, guys, I guess we'll take another break during the National Anthem whenever that comes around. 
We're always told to do so. So uh, Gibson getting the last few shots in out there. Yeah, <laughs> Gibby putting oh, some in Gibby. from the there volleyball line. Let's, yeah, let's, let's quit on that one. You always want to quit on the make from the volleyball oh, line. I agree. I agree. Yeah, Ethan Gibson, he's a he's a key factor to this Greenwich County team this year. He's kind of like, a, I don't know what you like him to. Vinny Johnson, the microwave yeah, 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 coming yeah, off the yeah, bench. Yeah, that's a great one right there. It's hard, yeah, <laughs> for sure. He's our microwave. He's a great six man. Of course, Harrington's been giving some good minutes off the bench as well. Uh, you know, we're going to need those guys down the stretch. He has 30 seconds left until the tip off as the crowd is getting fired up. Student section down to our right. The pet band doing a good job. Yes, yeah, so I love having the pet band. I love that. Tulsa has even brought some cheerleaders from Tulsa High School. Yeah. On, on the left end. Yeah, you know, those, those are good looking uniforms. So we'll have the national anthem. So we'll go ahead and go to one more break. If you have one for me, Josh, uh, we'll go to one more break during the national anthem. Be right back here for the starting lineups here at Greenup County High School. We'll be right back. On my it's tailgate time in the bluegrass. Uncle, Uncle Rick, Rick, what, what are, are you doing? doing? I'm getting ready to make my announcing debut. And I believe that's football time in the bluegrass. But you can believe this, Clark's has everything you need for a winning tailgate. Whether it's ice and cold drinks, chips and dips, or homemade sandwiches, and crispy, crunchy chicken for everybody, Clark's has you covered. And you don't even have to leave your car thanks to our convenient drive through Clark's Pump and Shop. Return. Refresh. Refuel. Visit the Ashland Boyd County Health Department to catch up on routine childhood vaccines such as MMR, Tdap, HPV, and hepatitis. Please call 606-324-7181 to schedule an appointment. Stand under the mistletoe. Put presents under the tree. But if you drive under the influence, you could end up under arrest. Drive sober or get pulled over. I felt like I didn't matter at my past job and regroup helps me to feel like I am important and that I have meaning and purpose. If you really want to feel like you are important um, and feel like you want a home, um, some place that you can talk to anybody about anything, I think regroup is the place for you to work. Like we're a team and we're a family and I feel just like I'm welcomed here and I'm loved here and I feel like I matter here. We're back here at the greenhouse, ready for the starting lineups. Number two comes out for uh, Tulsa, Evan Ball. He's a sophomore. Number 13, Parker Watts. Number 15, Bryson Muncy, the six foot four, 215 pound senior. Number 30 is a starter. And that is Robert Evans. He is a freshman. And number 32, Bray Mollett. Bray Mollett. So Robert Evans, Evans, a freshman starting. I didn't see that coming. I didn't either. So Josh Hoffmeister, he was a captain. He must be the sixth man. Right, right. Now let's let you watch the starting lineups announced here for the Greenup County Musketeers. Suspects for your Greenham County Musketeers, your usual starting five. We've seen a lot, 
that group all year pretty much. Here we go, about ready to tip things up here from the greenhouse. Eli. Hacken, yeah, Hacken, he lost his last tip, but he don't lose many. I don't know that Eli Atkins really lost the tip, right, but they right. may have got to it before. We say, yeah. <laughs> oh, that one now, now that one uh, Tulsa comes away with. Number 32, Mollett, puts up the three. No good. Chandley rebounds, and here come the Musketeers. Just like that. Gammon with the ball on the right side out top to Chandley. Looking inside to Underwood. Underwood, the defense collapses around him, gives it to Bradley Atkins, drives, gives it to Gammon in the corner. Gammon finds Eli Atkins underneath, out top to Chandley. Green up being patient on their first possession. Man to man defense from Tulsa. Well, player fell down, and Gammon took go. advantage of it. Right on cue. Good 10 footer from Casey Gammon. When you're that open, you got to shoot it. And he did. There's 30. That's uh, Evans. Evans gives it to Muncie. Over to Watts. Watts, top of the key. Bradley Atkins always draws the other team's best player. Watts, good pass down to Mollett. Kicks it out in the corner. Wide open three. No good. Tipped around. Rebound to Evans. Misses Eli Atkins on the rebound for the Musketeers. Here comes Eli. Gives it to Chanley. Chanley, good job by Bryson. Taking it hard to the rim and getting fouled and earning two free throws. Yeah, Tulsa, they're not afraid to put up that three. Foul, fouls on Parker Watts, number 13. And Chandler will go to the line for two free throws. First free throw is good. Good looking for him. Chandler, very athletic. Works really hard on me. Good rebounder. Second free throw from Chandler. Up, oh, player was in the lane, so it's not going to matter, but Chandler hits it anyway. 4 nothing, Greenham. Here comes uh, with the basketball at the top of the key is, uh, let me get these names down, that's Ball. Well, there's Bryson Chandler on the rebound. He gets it to Gammon. Up to Eli Atkins, being closely guarded. Atkins out to Gammon. Gammon dribbling to the right side between the leg dribble out top. Spin move by Gammon down the lane, throws it up, no good. Rebound mm. down to Watts, powerful rebound. Yeah, look at that ball, just kind of came out of his hand. He's Ooh, like a little over and back, and they did catch it. Yeah, there you go. Oops, turn over. Turn over. Yeah, the player just went over the line and passed it backward into the backcourt. It'll be Greenups County's ball at midcourt. Little mistake. Here we go, Casey Gammon with the ball. 6-12 remaining in the first quarter. Greenup County on top, 4-0. Here's Eli Atkins on the near wing. Get out to Bryson Chanley. Chanley to Bradley Atkins. Atkins being closely guarded out to Gammon. Confident three. Good looking shot right. by Casey Gammon. How about that? As we said in the pregame, if we can get Casey Gammon going from three point country, this makes this team ever so more dangerous. That's right. Look at him now. Leads all scores with five here early. There's Mollett with the ball. Mollett throws that one down to the cheerleaders who are headed to the state championship tomorrow. That's right. Don't want to hurt any cheerleaders before That's what I was saying. Well, they're, 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 they're ready. They're alert. <laughs> Here we go, 7 nothing Musketeers. Casey Gammon brings the ball down the floor. Another good start for Greenup County. Right side to Bradley Atkins. On top to Gammon. Gammon thought about pulling the trigger from three. He thinks better of it and gives it to Cohen Underwood. Back to Chanley. Chanley puts down a nice crossover dribble. He's got a nice, low, smooth crossover dribble. Sure does. Cohen Underwood for three, top of the key. Misses this one. Eli Atkins jumps up and gets it. Chanley with the rebound. He'll try it again from long range. No good. Rebound down to Casey Gammon. Gammon from 15 feet. No good. Oh, rebound again to Greenup County. Gammon goes and gets it. Back to Underwood. I figured he'd just try it again right there. He yeah. was open. Yep. Yeah. Just hesitated slightly right there. Greenup County will set it up. Bradley Atkins on the right side. 
Musketeers, three and four on the season. Looking to go to four and four. Casey Gammon puts down a dribble, throws up a 19-footer, no good. Nice rebound again by Parker Watts. Here comes Watts out of there with the ball, goes all the way, coast to coast, puts it off the glass, no good, but he does get fouled. And they say the foul was before the shot. Fouls on Casey Gammon, his first, Greenup's first. And there we've seen Tulsa just pushing it. We've seen a lot of teams do that against Greenup County, try to get that ball down the court as quick as they can. Mollett inbounds the basketball from underneath the Tulsa basket. Gets it out to Ball. Ball looks inside to Mollett, working on Underwood. Kicks it out to the corner to Parker Watts. Three, and he gets fouled. Bradley Atkins hit him in the corner. Yep. And that'll give Parker Watts three free throws. Yeah, you hate to see that. Well, uh, Allen, really just cold shooting so far tonight. Start this game in Newark, Graham County. He's been hitting pretty well. Yeah, it was three free throws there. Uh, yeah, exactly. I, I think they forgot that. He's missed the first two, though. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, just checking with some technical difficulties we were having with the YouTube broadcast tonight. Uh, trying to get the copyright set correctly on that. It was, apparently, it was, written, it was flagged as copywritten and uh, not showing on YouTube right now. So. Only available on Facebook and uh, the MyTown app right now, I believe. Yeah, download that app. So Watts, after hitting one of three, makes it a seven to one game. Here's Chanley, good move through the lane, throws it up, no good though. Mollett, Mollett rebounds for Tulsa. Mollett puts down a power dribble, goes to the hole, puts it up, and gets fouled, and he'll go to the line. Well, he is deceptively quick. I'm going to watch him all night. He's, he's a heck of a little ball player. Fouls on Cohen Underwood. Bray Mollett, he's 5'10", 220 pounds. Right. Like a fullback out there. First free throw is good. Three minutes, 55 seconds left here in the first quarter. Second free throw is off the mark. Cohen Underwood corrals the rebound. Gets it ahead to Eli Atkins, out to Underwood, top of the key. Casey Gammon on the right side. Out front to Chanley. Chanley puts it on the floor, goes to the rim, lays it up and in. Smooth move. Sure was. Long legs. There's Watts back the other way. Picks it up, misses. Eli Atkins, good rebound. Skywalking for that one, and Watts will pick up his second foul of the game. Silly foul there for Watts. I don't know why you would do that. That's the kind of foul Coach Brian Stacy, I'm sure, does not like, you know, 90 feet from the basket. Exactly. Reaching in uh, unnecessarily. Wasn't, wasn't really going to get it there. Just picked up the cheap foul. Here's Eli Atkins out top, left side to Cohen Underwood. Musketeers lead this one 9-2. Bryson Chanley over to Casey Gammon. To Eli Atkins. Atkins drives, puts it up. Good move by Eli Atkins nice to the hang hole. Time there. Yeah. It's a hard shot to stop right there. 11 2, Musketeers out to a nine point lead. Here's Watts with the basketball. Atkins hounding him. Watts goes around him, though, lays it up. No good. Rebound to Bryson Chanley. Gets it out to Eli Atkins. Musketeers might have some numbers here, but they'll slow it up. Give it to Chanley again. Has it tipped away. Ahead to Watts. Watts can throw it down. Look out. And he does so. Parker Watts for two. Two Anders. Well, nice job, Parker. Saw him do that in the warm-ups. Uh, Parker Watts for Tulsa with the first slam dunk of the night. I would have lost my bet on that. I would have taken Eli Atkins. Yeah, me too. Here's Bradley Atkins in the right corner. Drives the baseline. Kicks it out now to Chanley. Now to Casey Gammon. Top of the key. Good dribble move by Casey Gammon. Got pushed in the oh. back, and they did get the call. Nice call by the referee underneath to see that sly push in the back. He about had that floater down. I think in and out of there. So he'll shoot two. Yeah, kind of two of two from the line. Meanwhile, Tulsa two of five. Here early on. 
believe the foul was on Evan Ball, looked like, number two. Free throw from Gammon is good. 12 to four, Greenup County on top, 213 remaining here in quarter number one from the greenhouse. On this Friday night of basketball, good crowd here for the Musketeers. Casey Gammon sinks free throw number two, 13-4. Got to get our points on the scoreboard there. I'm quite sure it's 13-4. Here we go. Parker Watts, good, good drive through the lane. Good left-hand scoop shot by Parker Watts. And He's heating up. Maybe I'm wrong, Brian. They got 11-6 on the scoreboard still, but I, I could have swore it was 13. Here's Cohen Underwood in the lane. Underwood, post move, turns, puts it in. Good job by Cohen Underwood. Soft touch. Now they give the Musketeers their points on the scoreboard. 15-6, minute 30 remaining. Mollett in the corner, throws it out top where Ball retrieves it. Over top of Casey Gammon, Ball throws up the runner. Eli Atkins goes up and gets the rebound, gets hit. Doing some dribbling moves in the backcourt. Chanley offers the screen. Gives it to Underwood, up ahead. Chanley, top of the key. Bryson, he'll pull from about 17 feet. No good. Rebound. Down to Cole Blackburn in the game, number three. Cole Blackburn, a junior, 6'2 junior for Tulsa. Long three from Parker Watts, no good. Rebound to Gammon. All right, one and done for Tulsa, that's true. There's Chanley. Up top gives it to Eli Atkins on the left side. Top of the key to Bryson Chanley. Chanley backing his man down. Is it to Gammon? There's Cohen Underwood, top of the key. Pump fakes. Drives. Strong drive by Cohen Underwood. Good job by Cohen Underwood for the two and one. Again, another, another one of his patented moves showing his strength. That was all strength right there from Underwood. Yeah, we saw. Hang, 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 and then throw it in. We saw that earlier this season in the game against Mason County. Underwood decided he was not going to be stopped, and uh, he has the strength, and uh, you know, upper body strength to get there and finish around the rim. I love his game. He's very extremely strong. YouTube back up, Maroon. That's good. That's good news. We got the good news back that YouTube is back up. So we're back on the air on YouTube. For those of you who like to watch it on your televisions at home, like my, my dad, he texted me asking me where the game was tonight. He only knows one way to get it there on YouTube. Yeah, I do the screencast. <laughs> that's what I do. I, I, use, I do Facebook or the app. Mollett, he'll try the 15-footer. He'll miss. Eli Atkins comes out of the air like Superman to get it. Casey Gammon for three. No good. Rebound down to, well, that's number 30. Yeah, that's Robert Evans, the freshman. Left side's ball with it. Ball. Finds Mollett down on the block, out to ball. Four seconds. Out top they go. They didn't know how much time was left. Eli Atkins got to put it up and didn't know the time was running out. So after one quarter here from the greenhouse, it's Greenup County 17, Tulsa 6. We'll be right back here on My Town TV. Whether it's a breakfast sandwich or pizza on the way to the track, picking up drinks and crispy crunchy chicken on the way to the game, or a late night snack on the way home, no one has you covered like Clark's Pump and Shop. Clark's Pump and Shop. Return. Free bread. Refuel. Visit the Ashland Boyd County Health Department to catch up on routine childhood vaccines, such as MMR, Tdap, HPV, and hepatitis. Please call 606-324-7181 to schedule an appointment. wings the deals don't stop buy one get one half off wing tuesdays buy one get one free bonus thursdays and three to six dollar happy hour deals from three to six p.m every weekday only at buffalo wild wings we're back here at the greenhouse where the greenup county musketeers lead the tulsa rebels 18 to 6 after one period of play 18-6, they got off that good start tonight. That's, what, that's one thing I, I was looking forward to, and, and uh, they've done just that, got out to a good start. 
to pedal the metal early, and they've got a good good lead right now over this visiting good Tulsa team. Yeah, Casey Gammon leading the way so far with seven points. Proving once again, a different musketeer can do it on any given night. Yeah, just, and that's funny. Right on cue, we talked about him before the game, you know, and what he could do to contribute to this team, and he's, that's what he's doing. Here's showing Gammon. His, showing yeah. his stuff tonight. Gammon out top, gives it to Chanley on the right side. Chanley to Bradley Atkins. A Gavin Harrington into the game for uh, – Cohen Underwood, I believe. Chanley with the ball on the baseline. Kicks it out to Atkins. Atkins will take his 15-footer, get hit. No call. Mollette. Huh. Mollette gets it. And here comes Tulsa. Bradley Atkins, good steal for Bradley. Throws it ahead to Casey Gammon. Gammon runs it down in the corner. Out to Eli Atkins for three. Left side. Good. That's the way to score off the turnover, boys, right there. Here's Ball with the basketball. Tipped away by Casey Gammon. Good swipe by Gammon all the way to the rim and lays it in. All right, boys. Casey Gammon with some defense. 23-6, Musketeers lead. Tulsa wants a full timeout with 7.09 remaining here in the second quarter. We'll be right back here on My Town TV. Visit the Ashland Boyd County Health Department to catch up on routine childhood vaccines such as MMR, Tdap. HPV, and hepatitis. Please call 606-324-7181 to schedule an appointment. Whether it's ice and cold drinks, chips and dips, or homemade sandwiches, and crispy, crunchy chicken for everybody, Clark's has you covered. And you don't even have to leave your car thanks to our convenient drive through Clark's Pump and Shop. Return. Refresh. Refuel. We're back here in Lloyd, Kentucky, home of the Greenup County Musketeers, Greenup County High School. The Musketeers lead this one over Tulsa 23-6. 7.09 left in the second quarter. That must have been deep. That Musketeer defense getting, getting at it right there. Two quick turnovers led to a three and a, and a little 5 0 run right there. Into the game for Tulsa is another freshman, number 55, CJ Waller, six foot four. Tulsa has no shortage of height on their team. Ball, long three pointer, off the mark. Rebound, well, Ethan Gibson's in there too. Mollett gets that over Gibson, but Gibson comes down with this rebound and gives it to Casey Gammon. Gibson from downtown, Brian, no good. Rebound Ooh. tipped around by Harrington, and Waller comes out of there with it. Ball on the run, gives it to C.J. Waller. Tipped away by Gammon, good steal by Casey. Stolen right back by Ball, tipped away again by Gammon. He's going to pick up the foul this time, kind of swoop it in from behind to get foul number two. Yeah, it was just a bang, bang, back and forth kind of a play right there. A little bit out of control. 6.30 and counting here in the second quarter. Evans with the ball. Then Tulsa getting a little loose with the basketball. Bradley Atkins takes it coast to coast, lays it in, gets the end. One, Bradley right. Atkins. There's his first two tonight. Chance for the old-fashioned three. There's number three, Cole Blackburn on the foul for Tulsa. 25-6, Bradley Atkins at the line. And let's hope Bradley can uh, sink this free throw. Give us a 20-point lead early in this one. How about that? Into the game for the Musketeers is Hayden Plummer, senior. He got some action in the West Carter game, but other than that, we haven't seen him this year. Well, yeah, not much of him. Adkins misses. Eli Adkins rebounds and gets two instead of one. Oh, if you're a coach, you hate that. 27-6, to six, Greenup County out in front on this one. Aiden Plummer playing some defense out front against the ball. And that ball is thrown away by Evans. Evans comes up with it, throws it over to Waller. Waller, cross court he goes. Eli Atkins picks it off. And Eli will bring it up the floor himself. Eli moves toward the lane to Ethan Gibson. Open three, top of the key, no good this time. Brought down and controlled by Robert Evans. He brings it up the floor for Tulsa. Gives it out front to Ball. Ball. Tough defense, Green County. 
And that was a focal point tonight for the Musketeers. Foul on Greenup. That was on Atkins, maybe, Bradley? <clears throat> I believe so. Bradley Atkins on the foul. His second foul of the night, and R.J. Veach looks like he's ready to check into the game for Greenup County. Leading 27 to 6, 529 left. As the first free throw for All that. Cole, Cole Blackburn. Blood Blackburn, Jim? Yeah, Blackburn number three. Oh, yeah, you're right. Sorry about that. He puts it in, makes it 27 to 7 as Veach checks into the game. So the Musketeers have Plummer, Gibson, Harrington, Eli Atkins, and Veach in the game as Bryson Chanley checks back in for Gavin Harrington right now. Second free throw. Second free throw was good. Cole Blackburn, number three. Here we go. Here's Chanley with the ball. Gives it to Plummer out front. Plummer drives to the free throw line, kicks it out to Ethan Gibson. Gibson holding it high above his head. Eli Atkins thought about the three. He'll take the 15-footer. Man, that's pretty. That's so pretty. It's almost a patented 15-footer at this point. Oh, uh, he's, he's good at that shot. Long three, left side by Ball, right in front of the green-up bench. He puts it in. Good shot by Evan Ball. And that's their first three. Here's Eli Atkins back the other way. Hayden Plummer with the basketball. Gives it to Bryson Chanley to Ethan Gibson. Gibson, good pass down to Chanley. Nice assist from Ethan Gibson to Bryson Chanley for two. Six now for Chanley. 4.34 left in the first half, 31-11. Greenup County in the lead. Evan Ball drives to the basket. Ethan Gibson with the rebound on the wild shot. Gibson brings it up the floor. Hayden Plummer will try left-handed three. No good. Rebound down to Evans. And here comes Tulsa up the floor with the basketball. Robert Evans. Crossover. Gives it off to number 15 into the game. That's Bright Muncie. Muncie out to Ball. Ball to Mollett. Over to Evans on the left side. Back to Muncie. Muncie to Mollett. Mollett working on Ethan Gibson. Tulsa went a lot of that high low screen, isn't it? Cole Good Blackburn open. looping three there. Uh, air ball out of bounds. And hmm. we'll have some substitutes check yet. Well, that was ugly. Eli Atkins will check out for a bit. We've seen nine Musketeers so far in this game. Here comes Hayden Plummer with the basketball over the timeline. Plummer. Little crossover dribble out front. Is it to Underwood on the right side? Underwood holds the ball high above his head. Now he'll put it on the ground. Good crossover from Cohen. Good pass by Cohen, but R.J. Veach could not quite handle it. As it goes out of bounds, it'll be Tulsa's ball. Well, it was a crisp pass. Had the right idea. Ball brings it up the floor for Tulsa. Down 20. Parker Watts back into the game. Watts will take a 17-footer. Missed that one. Rebound down to R.J. Veach. He's oh, pushed down to the yeah. ground by well, Josh Hoffmeister into the game as well for Tulsa. The Hoffmeister. Hoffmeister. That's 10 now. Tulsa players to be played in this game. So they get a lot of guys that get some action tonight. Three minutes and 12 seconds and counting here in the first half. Here comes Hayden Plummer over the timeline. Plummer. Looks underneath, to looking for Underwood, taken away by Evans, taken right back away by Gibson. He gives it to Harrington underneath, blocked away by Muncie. Ball picks it up on the run. Ball's tripped up, and Veach comes out of there with it. He's tripped up. Chippy, chippy, chippy. Lots of chaotic action going end to end. Uh, Underwood trying to settle him down. I don't know if he saw something we didn't see or not, but Underwood appeared to be kind of irritated there. It's somebody. Coach Corey Allison going to take a 30-second timeout right now, kind of get a reset, get everybody calm yeah, down. Yeah, that's a good timeout. Yeah, up 20. We still want to play some good basketball here uh, with a different right. combination in the game. See, game is going to come back in. Maybe here soon, Gammon, you know, the, the floor general. Yeah, Casey Gammon done a good job really for us all season long. Uh, 
just looking for his role to expand as the season goes on, add some more scoring, add some more three-point shooting. He's so capable of doing so. Coming into the season, I thought really Casey had the finest uh, looking uh, form on the team as far as his shot goes. Well, he does got great form. Greenup County leads in this one, 31 to 11, 253 to go here in the first half from the greenhouse. Musketeers looking to go four and four on the season. Take a few day break, which is very odd for the Musketeers. Next yeah, game's not until Tuesday. Boy, as much as they played, you're right. That's we get a well-deserved rest for these guys. Underwood out front. Finds Ethan Gibson left corner. Good from the oh, corner go. pocket. There's Gibby. With his first three of the night, here's Parker Watts out front. R.J. Veach defending him. Good defense by Veach. Underwood comes out of there with it on the run. Underwood, nice pass to Veach, up and in. Wow, how about that? Senior leader getting the done out there. R.J. Veach with the two up ahead. Tulsa goes, long three, no good. Rebound down to Harrington. Harrington gives it to Casey Gammon. Gammon. His left side to Cohen Underwood. Underwood out to Gammon, open three, no good this time. And it goes out of bounds. I'll tell you, Veach, well, I get Veach and Harrington a little confused Yeah, sometimes. they look similar, yeah. But similar. Veach and Harrington out here right now with these haircuts and everything, I, I feel like we got the Duke Blue Devils. This is our Duke Blue Devils yeah, squad yeah. out here. Our Christian Leitner looking squad. Yeah, and Plummer reminds me of like a Roger Harden. <laughs> Here's Parker Watts with the basketball out top for Tulsa, he misses. Cohen Underwood rebounds. Gets it up ahead to Gibby. Gibby out top to Casey Gammon. Musketeers up 25, 36 to 11. A minute 36 left in the first half. Cohen Underwood on the right side. Out top to Casey Gammon. Gammon, good behind the back dribble. Good job by Casey wow. Gammon, except yeah. for the finish that time. He, yeah. he got to the rim. Yeah, sure. He was held back a little bit right there, but no call. Man, so that's okay. Let him play through that, I guess. There's Evans for Tulsa. Charges into Underwood and puts the basket in. Good job by freshman Robert Evans. I like his game. It's his first two points. He's got a bevy of rebounds as well. Solid minutes for Evans. Here's R.J. Veach with the basketball. He finds Cohen Underwood down low. Puts it down on the ground. A little dangerous there. Underwood in a tussle with it now. And they come out of there with it. We'll see who. foul. It's a few words being exchanged, I believe. Foul is called on Tulsa. It's going to be Greenup County's basketball. Hayden Plummer checks back into the game for Casey Gammon. Yeah, Underwood's a guy I wouldn't want to tussle with. Well, Cohen Underwood, as you've called him, the glue guy on this team, brings a lot of grit to the floor for the Musketeers. Here's Ethan Gibson finds nice. Underwood. Underwood, good pass to R.J. Veach from 15 feet. No good. And it's tipped off of Cohen's hand. Out of bounds. It'll be Tulsa basketball. Yeah, you got to take that shot for Veach. He was open. Left hand just kind of didn't get enough. Giddy up on it. Here comes Watts. Watts, good between the leg dribble. Good spin move all the way to the rim. Beautiful job by Parker Watts for the two-point conversion. Smooth, smooth. Foul goes on Veach that time. And Watts will go to the line to try to finish the and one play. 36-13. Green up on top by 23. Watts trying to cut it to 22 with 38 seconds, and he does. Yeah, Tulsa needed that. Kind of stopped the bleeding a little bit there. Get back in control before halftime. Get this thing. They reset the clock to 45 seconds. They must have uh, let some seconds tick off. <laughs> Student section having a good time here tonight at the greenhouse. Yeah, it's nice to get a few home games under the belt here. Good crowds out to see this team play. Deservedly so. I uh, once again encourage anybody that's a Greenham County Musketeer fan or, or even thinking about becoming one. Come see this team and uh, oh, check yeah. it out. You can't help but fall in love with these guys. They're great group of kids. And they have big things ahead of them this year. Can't wait till the second half of the season when we enter the all-important district play. 
Yeah, they've exceeded my expectations. Here's Plummer for the Greenup County. Gets the screen out top from Underwood. Plummer to Veach to Ethan Gibson. Left side to Plummer. Plummer waits with the basketball. Gets a screen from Underwood. Plummer, crossover dribble to the baseline. Kicks it out to Ethan Gibson for three in the corner. Got it. Money. Ethan Gibson. I'm glad Ethan Gibson's on our team. Parker Watts, good three-pointer from him from the other end. Just doing it himself. Eight seconds, 39-19. Gibby out top, left side to Underwood. Four seconds, Underwood kicks it underneath, finds Harrington, throws it up, no good. Rebound to Veach, but oh. the half is over. Greenham oh. County. Mm, Harrington won that bad. Yep. Greenham County leads it at halftime, 39-19. We'll be right back with the SOMC Halftime Show. Give you the stats, get you ready for the second half. Thank you for joining us here tonight on My Town TV. Uncle Rick, what are you doing? I'm dreaming. Of what? Fall on the bluegrass, days at the track, nights on the 50 yard line. Well, you want to be at the 50 instead of on the 50. That could be dangerous. But to complete your day, you can count on Clark's Pump and Shop. Whether it's a breakfast sandwich or pizza on the way to the track, picking up drinks and crispy crunchy chicken on the way to the game, no one has you covered like Clark's Pump and Shop. Clark's Pump and Shop. Return. Refresh. Refuel. Visit the Ashland Boyd County Health Department to catch up on routine childhood vaccines such as MMR, Tdap, HPV, and hepatitis. Please call 606-324-7181 to schedule an appointment. Stand under the mistletoe. Put presents under the tree. But if you drive under the influence, you could end up under arrest. Drive sober or get pulled over. Something that made me want to work with Regroup was um, the relationships that I have with my colleagues. My leadership and my supervisors are always the first ones to be able to um, help me with anything and I love being able to be entrusted with the responsibilities that I have. But know that if I have problems that I'm able to go to either my fellow clinicians or colleagues or um, my leadership team to help me with any kind of problem. Back here at the greenhouse, it's halftime. Greenham County leads 39-19 over the Tulsa Rebels. Good first half from Greenham, good solid first half. Uh, up 20 in this one. This is a, a kind of unfamiliar territory for the Musketeers so far this year. Now we did have a big lead the other night against Wes Carter, and I'm sure Coach Corey Allison will refer to this in the locker room, and we let him come back and get the game all, all the way to within five in the second half. Yeah, that was scary, yeah. Before we closed it out and won by 15 in the end. 15 or 16 in the end. But let's go over some first half stats uh, for Tulsa. Those are things that burn you up right there in a place like that. Yeah, it was all about Parker Watts in the first half. He had 11 points and led the way. Not much else from the other players from Tulsa in the first half. Evan Ball had three, Robert Evans with two, and Cole Blackburn with two. Bray yeah. Mullet with one point in the first half. Yeah, and the Musketeers had uh, you know seven players score first half. That's good. And Tulsa only had uh, four players score, or five, excuse me. Yeah, good but again, job. Greenham County just manhandling this team right now so far tonight. Great, yeah. great performance. Yeah, Greenham County, uh, Casey Gammon leading the way, along with Eli Atkins, nine apiece, six points apiece from Ethan Gibson and Bryson Chanley. Cohen Underwood has five, and then R.J. Veach and Bradley Atkins have pitched in two apiece. So we'll be right back here in just a moment. We'll take another one break here on the SOMC halftime show. Maybe have a special guest here coming up at halftime. We'll be right back here on My Town TV. I've been a member for a little over 46 years. They're very family oriented. Um, you just walk in and everybody's friendly. They talk to you, you know, they know you by name. You know, you may not go in there for a day or you know, several years and I think you, you go in there and you still feel like family. Recently we refinanced our home and it felt like it was right because we trust 
the people that work there. This is my people. At Buffalo Wild Wings, the deals don't stop. Buy one, get one half off Wing Tuesdays. Buy one, get one free bonus Thursdays. And three to six dollar happy hour deals from three to six p.m. every weekday. Only at Buffalo Wild Wings. struggle to concentrate. You don't understand why your mood swings and your energy is down. You're asking yourself why you have feelings of guilt, worthlessness, or even suicidal thoughts. Your mind is screaming, help. Pathways is listening. Call or chat with our crisis helpline now at pathways-ky.org. We are back here at the Greenhouse in Graham County, where Graham County leads uh, 39 to 19 early here in this uh, Titanic struggle. I uh, tell you, Brian, you so know, like Green. Sean Boggs, yeah, how you doing, Sean? Good, good, Brian. It seems like uh, Green is controlling the game tonight. Oh, it's, yeah. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, it looks like, um, um, well, yeah, they're controlling the game 39 to 19. So, um, yeah. yeah, Sean. Yeah, my good friend Sean Boggs. He has his pulse on the program here. His daughter is one of the uh, cheerleaders for Greenham County. That's what we kind of want to give a little update on right now, Sean. Uh, they are going to state tomorrow, I believe, and um, I guess they would kind of be one of the early favorites, maybe being champions last year. Well, you know, um, you know, the Greenup Cheer team. They won the state last year, which is an incredible feat. I mean, there's so much talent in Kentucky. It's oh sure. It's it, it's incredible to know that. Um, like, you know, I've been to Florida a couple times, but, you know, cheerleading in Kentucky is a big deal. It is. Uh, there, there's a lot, a lot of good teams, and to win the state last year was just an incredible feeling, and it was an incredible feeling to come back home on 64, on 23, having the um, escorts and stuff like escorts. that. Escorts, it, it was incredible. So tomorrow we're going to defend our um, state championship. So um, how, know, how, how, how are they as far as injuries right now? I mean, they – are they pretty healthy? Pretty healthy group out there. Yeah, yeah, really. Yeah, we're we're good to go. I mean, we we have what we have. We're going to go with what we have tomorrow. And um, I have all the faith in the world in this cheer team, the coaches. Uh, you know, Greenup has a storied program. Oh, and, they, yeah, uh, they sure do. And uh, it's it's exciting. It's nervous for me, you know, as a oh, dad. Sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's so much easier to watch, you know, as a fan. But you know, as a dad, uh, it's it's similar to the olympics run i mean you oh know, yeah you know this is kind of like you can do things a thousand times perfect but uh when you get like on that stage and stuff like that you have to do it you know perfect no mistakes and that's uh, right so it's an exciting time it's going to be a nervous time but so happy for the girls so proud of the cheerleading program and uh Man, they put our name on the map you know i, I, I gotta tell you i mean you know, this Graham County team, you think it's cheerleading to me. They're known not just throughout this area and region, but nationally, hey, worldwide, basically. They've, they, you know, yeah. competed so many times on ESPN down in Orlando or wherever they go. But Yeah, yeah. No, ma no, ma no matter what happens and stuff like that, so proud of, uh, you know, our, our cheerleaders, our, our school, the parents, everybody that puts, like, forth the effort. Yeah, a lot into goes into this. it, I'm sure. A lot goes into it. So uh, either way, we're a winner. All right, that's right. There you go. Yeah, that's right. What a good, 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 good look at there. Again, yeah. that's Sean Boggs. We, we're about a minute and a half away from the second half start. We're going to take one more break here. We'll be, we'll be back here watching Graham County Musketeer Basketball on My Town TV. Better banking brings better opportunity. If you're looking for a loan, I encourage you to shop local. At Kentucky Farmers Bank, we make our decisions right here in our office. We give you the loans that you need and the personal service that you deserve. Kentucky Farmers Bank, member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. 
we take pride in our schools. And at King's Daughters, we take pride in being part of the team. With student athlete care from the sidelines to our comprehensive orthopedics program. With walk-in hours in Ashland and Portsmouth that make seeing a provider easier than ever. Our team is delivering faster diagnosis and treatment, getting our student athletes back in the game and back to what they do best. Orthopedics at King's Daughters. Hi, I'm Clay with Pollock Jewelers, and this uh, school season we want to wish all of our local teams the, the best. We want you to know that we're here for you in any of your gift giving needs. And uh, good luck to everyone this fall and next spring. We're back here at the greenhouse. Uh, Brian, a uh, good interview with Sean Boggs there, yes. parent of one of the hopefully state champion cheerleaders tomorrow. Right, and you know, the one thing I was kind of concerned about, just out, just out of curiosity, basically, was uh, the health of this uh, squad. And then he said, you know, we're good to go. Everybody's healthy, and so that's good. You want, you want to go compete healthy with all your, all your girls, so they're going to do that. Good luck to them girls tomorrow. Yeah, we look forward to seeing uh, how they do, and hopefully, uh, you know, next week, uh, we play here uh, Wednesday night, I believe, Chill the Coffee we have at home. Uh, hopefully welcoming back the state champion cheerleaders. That'd be awesome. We're underway already. Seems like a quick halftime. Tulsa with the basketball. Parker Watts wastes no time in putting up a three. He misses. Ball's tipped around, and uh, Bradley Atkins comes away with it, gives it to Eli Atkins. Working down the right side, out top to Cohen Underwood. He'll take the straightaway three. Good, Cohen Underwood. Good start for him. Picking up where he left off. Good steal by Casey Gammon. Gammon on the dribble, looking for room. Gammon going to take it all the way to the rim, get the layup up. And they slap the backboard that time. I don't know. Sometimes that can be called a goaltending. Yeah, it was close, real close. Kind of shook the backboard a bit. Good move by Parker Watts. Wow, pure strength right there, showing his agility and strength. 42-21. Gammon with the basketball. Is it to Eli Atkins out on the logo to Gammon. Gammon will take the three. Gammon will make the three. Yeah, nice shot right there. Good screen there by Chanley, hooking him up, and he's Musketeers are on fire. Started the half with two three-pointers from Cohen Underwood and Casey Gammon. Parker Watts answers for Tulsa. That's that is his. not going to make the uh, Greenup coaching staff happy who were looking for more defense this game. Well, that's his second three, only Tulsa's third of the game. Little laps that time, though. Left him open, left Parker Watts open out front. Here's Casey Gammon with the basketball. Green up up 21. Gammon just looking around. Uh, Green up looks kind of discombobulated right now, looking, trying to decide what they want to do. There they go. Yeah, oh, they were discombobulated, all right. They threw it away and went off Bryson Chanley's arm and out of bounds. It'll be Tulsa basketball. We've only got four turnovers for, so far tonight for Graham County. Ten for Tulsa. You could just tell that time it was taking a long time for them to decide you know, what formation even to get in. Parker Watts puts this one up. No good. Rebound to Casey Gammon. Here comes Gammon walking it up the floor over the timeline. Let's see how this possession goes. Gammon. Is it to Underwood? Underwood down to Chanley, knocked away from Chanley. They get him out in three-point territory. Muncie playing some physical defense out there. Chanley, ball goes on the ground. Gammon from the volleyball line, no good. Rebound down to Muncie. It's I'm all right with right that shot. It's ahead to Watts. He takes it all the way, lays it up, no good. Rebound tipped around, tipped again. Eli Atkins out of there on the run with it. Good job by Eli. Picks it up. Out top to Bryson Chanley. Thought about the three. I'd like to see Bryson go ahead and pull the trigger on that yeah, one. I'd yeah. like his three-point shot. Yeah. But, you know, overall, smart play right there. They didn't have the numbers. And Eli Atkins backed it up and started over. 
Good point. Chanley takes it up through Ooh, the lane. Man. This is the layup. Rebound down to knock the way to Watts. Watts comes down the floor with it. He's probably going to shoot it the way it's looking. Nope, not this time. Gives it to Evans, top of the key. Evans for Tulsa drives. Kicks it out top to Mollett. Evans thought about it there. Mollett over to Hoffmeister to Watts. A three pointer, no good. Rebound tipped to, from Chanley to Atkins. And here come the Musketeers up 21, 45, 24. 438 and counting here in the third quarter of play. 9.6 rebounds for Eli Atkins, unofficially. There's a walk from Casey Gammon. In their fifth turnover. Expected to be a little, little bit sloppy in a game like this where it's 45-24 right now with 431 left. Musketeers in control. Gavin Harrington comes into the game for Cohen Underwood. Mollett goes on the right side to Hoffmeister, inside to Watts, who puts it in. Just strength right there, much like Eli Atkins, that ability to hang and hang and hang. Great leaper. Hoffmeister is filling up the points tonight. Or, I'm sorry, not Hoffmeister, Watts is putting in the points tonight for Tulsa. Eli Atkins, 15-footer, no good, rims out. Rebound to Tulsa. That's Hoffmeister on the rebound. Gives it to Watts. He dribbles straight down the floor. There's a baseball pass underneath. It's uh, retrieved wow. by Tulsa. I thought we had a chance at getting that one, Brian. I thought we did have it. Hoffmeister, long three. Harrington rebounds. Gives it to Eli Atkins, and up the floor come the Musketeers. Casey Gammon out top. Gammon to Eli Atkins, three-point country. Good. Puts him in double figures. The second three. Two apiece for two threes apiece for Eli, Gammons, and Gibson. There's a missed shot, and Bryson Chanley brings it down. Chanley on the run, takes it all the way to the rim, tries to get it down to Harrington, but it goes off his hand and out of bounds. Hmm. Like you said, the Musketeer is just a little sloppy right now, it feels like. Yeah, three of their six turnovers have been right here in the last three minutes. Ethan Gibson into the game for Bryson Chanley. Here's Parker Watts, 15-footer, no good. Rebound tipped around, and uh, Evans comes away with it. Evans, good pass over to Muncie. Puts it on the ground. Gibson gets his hand in there. They're going to call a foul on Ethan Gibson. Mm. Okay, foul. Good hustle foul. Bray Mollett inbounds the basketball for Tulsa right under their rim. There's an open three for Evans. Good. I like his game. Give him five for the night, the freshman. 48-29. Tulsa has this lead under 20 now for the first time in a while. Ethan Gibson over to Harrington. Harrington pump fakes, takes it to the baseline, goes up strong, misses. Parker Watts rebounds. Out of there comes Hoffmeister. It's tipped to Muncie. Muncie. Finds Parker Watts, good guy to find, as he does a spin move and gets a, well, the ball gets knocked down. Tulsa comes up with the ball, and Watts jams it home. Wow, nice baseline runner, two-handed flush. Bodies tripping over each other there, and Tulsa has this lead down to 17. Bradley Atkins with the basketball. Atkins throws it away, trying to get it to Harrington. And the Musketeers are having some problems right now, Brian. Yeah, I'm not crazy about their... Uh Better take care of the basketball right now. Very sloppy. Evans to Watts. Oh, Watts was headed for a basket again, but dribbled it off his foot and out of bounds. 11 turnovers for Tulsa. But Graham County is kind of coming back here with now seven. Four turnovers this half for Graham County, three first half. That's unofficial, of course. Tulsa certainly had the momentum going their way there. Well, they did. Here's Gammon out top. Gammon on the dribble. Over to Underwood to Ethan Gibson. Gibson puts down a couple dribbles. Gives it inside to Underwood. Good kick out to Eli Adkins. He misses that three. Hoffmeister with the rebound on the dribble across the timeline. Out top to Cole Blackburn. Gives it to Evans. Evans on the dribble, just loses it. Underwood goes off Underwood's hand and out of bounds. 
It'll be Tulsa's basketball right underneath their own rim. Well, RJ. Tulsa, yeah, they'll be a little sloppy too. Yeah, he's saying, I guess they're, yeah, Veach coming back in with Plummer. Yeah, Plummer and Veach check back into the game. Blackburn going to inbound it for Tulsa, way out front to Parker Watts. Watts on the dribble. He'll take the near the volleyball three, and he wow. hits it. What a player. 48-34. The lead is all the way down to 14 now as all those turnovers and uh, the sloppy play is kind of costly. Yeah, that's 12 points this half for uh, Watts. He had 11 in the first half. Here's Gibson with the basketball. Gives it to R.J. Veach. Veach across to Plummer. Plummer on the dribble through the lane. Kicks it to Veach. Veach takes a dribble. It's Ethan Gibson, he goes up. He misses. Gibson underneath there. He's triple teamed. He goes up amongst it and puts it in. Good job by Ethan oh, Gibson. Yeah. Hanging with it. There you go, getting Way to work. Here comes Parker Watts for three. No good. Rebound out of there to Plummer on the run. Plummer. Right-hand dribble. Good pass to R.J. Veach. Goes up strong and gets fouled by Cole Blackburn. All right, there you go. Good job from Plummer. So R.J. Veach will go to the line for two shots. Greenup County with a 16-point lead. Trying not to let this one turn into a, a, slop, a barn burner. A slop fest, right. <laughs> yeah. Eight points for Gibson. He's doing his job off the bench. R.J. Veach, the senior, drops the first free throw in. He got three points on the night. Little lefty. In the game for Tulsa, now a junior Cameron Perkins, number 12. His first appearance on the night. C.J. Waller back into the game as well for Tulsa. Second free throw is good. 20 seconds left in the half. Watts drives the lane, gets fouled, does not get the shot to fall, but he'll get two free throws, as they'll call the foul on R.J. Veach. Well, what a player. 23 points tonight. Look at that, 24. He's three of five from the line now tonight. Tell you what, Brian, you could make a real all-star team with some of the players that we have played. To Mel Smith last night, uh, Parker Watts tonight, Jace Copley from Lucasville Valley. Oh, we, yeah, Copley, that's right. Yeah, we've seen some good ones this year. Man, you're not kidding. Them Blake boys were good, and man. Yeah, man. the Reed brothers, yeah. Yeah, Blake and Caden Reed. Blake and Caden Reed, that's right. Yeah. Here we go, Plummer, good pass to Veach. He goes up, gets it to go. Nice. Good job by R.J. Veach at the buzzer for Greenup County. After three periods of play, lead this one over to the Tulsa Rebels, 54-36. We'll be right back here on My Town TV. We're not changing what we do every day. We're there to help people. Every growth number that we have is another person that we helped. People out in the world today need help, and that's what we're there for. Visit the Ashland Boyd County Health Department to catch up on routine childhood vaccines such as MMR, Tdap, HPV, and hepatitis. Please call 606-324-7181 to schedule an appointment. Back here at the greenhouse, Greenup County leads 54-36 over Tulsa going into the fourth quarter of play. Yeah, that quarter right there was a good one for Tulsa. The first quarter, they outscored the Musketeers 17-15. Plummer out front to Veach. To Gibson on the left side. Gibson finds, oh, nope, did not find Chanley underneath. Threw the ball away. Evans stole it. Here comes Tulsa. Left corner, Muncie for three. No good. Rebound down to Watts, and he is pushed by R.J. Veach. It'll be Tulsa's ball underneath their own basket. Yep, first foul down the quarter. They got the, they're doing it different now. 
If I'm not mistaken, Brian, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Parker Watts has scored all the points for Tulsa in the second half. Yes, he has. Hoffmeister misses, Chanley rebounds, and a foul on Muncie. Oh, good rebound right there. That's his fifth I got for the night, Chanley. To go along with six points. Plummer gets some good minutes tonight. He is. Uh, Aiden Plummer, senior. For these Musketeers, doesn't see a lot of action, but he's in there tonight for a, quite an extended period. Ethan Gibson picks it up. Thought he might shoot the three there. He's wide open. Throws it to Veach. He throws it away. Man, back-to-back -back turnovers. Here comes Watts. He goes up high in the air, lays it in. Chanley tried to draw the charge. Didn't hang in there to get hit hard enough as Watts continues to be the only guy who scored Man, what a night. in the second half for Tulsa. There's Plummer. Is it to Veach? 54-38. It's a 16-point green of lead. 6.54 remaining. And don't forget, folks, we've seen stranger things happen. Remember the Greenup County comeback against Mason County earlier this year. Plummer oh, throws it wow. right away on the baseline. Three straight turnovers, three possessions. Wow. And I'm sure Coach uh, Allison uh, you know, knows what he's doing here. He's trying to get some of these guys who haven't had much experience right. and time in the game, get them comfortable in case they're needed in the second half of the season. Watts for three. Good again. Parker Watts is really heating up now. Showing what he's got. He's got a lot. This lead is down to 13 with 6.26 remaining. Yeah, getting a little interesting now. Plummer on the dribble out front. Gives it to Underwood. Underwood down to R.J. Veach. He executes a nice fake, but he's fouled before Cohen Underwood can put the three up. Looks like the starters are headed back into the game. Well, mostly the starters, at least. Uh, Gavin Harrington coming in with Eli Atkins, Bradley Atkins, and Casey Gammon. Yeah, the turnover, the turnover situation right now. I have Graham County kind of catching up there. They got 10 now, and of course, Tulsa was only 12. Harrington with the ball in the corner. It's knocked away by Tulsa. That's the danger in uh, doing what Greenup's done here so far. You've given Tulsa momentum right now, no matter who you put back in the game. Um, you know, Parker Watts is on fire. Yeah, you know, and if you're, if you're Tulsa, can, he, can Parker Watts do it all along? Six minutes to go in this ball game. Gammon out top. Gives it off to Eli Atkins, left side to Chanley. Chanley almost loses it. Gets it back out to Eli Atkins near the volleyball line, right side to Gammon. Gammon puts it down on the floor. Left-hand dribble, Eli Atkins in the corner. Good drives move. the paint out to Bradley Atkins. He'll try a three, no good. Rebound down to Mollett. And uh, Tulsa can cut this thing to 10 with another Parker Watts three. Here's Evans. Evans on the right side out to Watts. Here's the danger man here. Watts for three right in front of the Tulsa bench. Splash. Golly. Wow. Remember when teams used to come into Rupp Arena and just fill it up in every way imaginable? I right. feel like that's what players do here in the greenhouse against yeah, us. Yeah, you're right. Eli Atkins turns the corner, drives to the, through the paint, blocked away. Atkins comes up with it, blocked away again. They're going to call a foul from behind on Parker Watts. He cannot believe it. He got him. Eli Atkins will go to the line for two shots. And suddenly, Greenup County finds themselves in a ball game with 5.05 left, a 10 point game, 54 to 44. Now, free throws come, become important here down the stretch again. First one's good from Eli Atkins. That's his first free throw, believe it or not. Parker Watts has all but 11 of Tulsa's points. Wow. So that means 33 so far tonight for Parker Watts. Atkins misses the second free throw. Oh. It's tipped around. And Mollett looks like he's going to come out of there with it for Tulsa. I think I'd give it to 13. 13 pulls up, three-pointer. He's knocked around out there. Couldn't get it. Mollett has the basketball, and he's fouled by Eli Atkins. Happy foul there. Ball just didn't bounce our way right there. Here we go. Mollett inbounding the basketball. Gets it out top to, well, 
That's a oh, yeah, we hard call that. fall there by Gavin Harrington. As he tripped over the player on the ground, the player on the ground was Cole Blackburn. The Tulsa crowd does not like that call one bit. Yeah, well, you know, I see the frustration there with that call, but you, know, you got to get it's a dangerous when a player's up in the air like that. He's got to have somewhere to land. And if you're in his part, if you're in his path, you're going to get called for the foul. Turned up the intensity in the gym. Greenup can't perform with intensity in the gym. Eli Atkins stepped, well, he walked over there in the corner. Cohen Underwood going to check into the game for Gavin Harrington. So the Musketeers have all their starters back into the game. 55-44, 4.35 left in this one. Parker Watts letting the ball bounce, keeping the time frozen. He gets it. He takes off to the rim, lays it up, and gets fouled by Bradley Atkins. And he'll have two free throws to get it into single digits. He's just completely taking over this game. It's a one-man show. It's like watching Pistol Pete out there. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean he's last night player. we got to see Uncle Drew. Tonight it's Pistol Pete here in the greenhouse. That's right. That's right, Uncle Drew. That was a good one last night. I meant to say that. Here we go. Here's the free throw from Watts. It's good. I'm running out of space for him. <laughs> 55 to 45. Parker Watts is having a legendary night here in the greenhouse. Good again. And Tulsa wants a 30-second timeout as they have the lead under 10 now for the first time in a long time. Let's see. What's he got in the second half? Three, two, three. What do you got? How many points you got? Watch. Yeah. Well, I, it's easier for me to just to count up the rest of the team's points. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, oh, 5, yeah. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. They have 11. Parker Watts has 35 so far on the night. Jeez. Wow. Jeez. And crackers. Whew. 35. Jeez. And crackers indeed, Brian. Yeah, that's the last little one right there. <laughs> that comes out of my Lord of Mercy bag. I like it. 35 points. Boy, I need mean, he didn't have a really that good of a first half. Imagine who he played like this in the first half. My goodness. Whew. Here we go. Greenup County with the ball on a nine-point lead, clinging to a nine-point lead, it feels like at this point. Eli Atkins with the ball on the left side. Gives it to Gammon in the corner. Gammon out top to Chanley. Chanley. Greenup County just really hasn't let the shots go all night like I've, I've seen them let them go this season. They just look to be like they're slowing things down or something against right, this Tulsa right. defense. There's a give to Underwood. They definitely slow it down right now. I can kind of see that. Make them, make them come out and guard you. Yeah, they could be trying to just slow it. Atkins runs into a body there, and they're going to call the foul on the ground. Yeah, that's a good call. Fouls on Robert Evans, the, the six-foot-one freshman from Tulsa. And that's going to be two free throws. Greenup County already in the bonus. Eli Atkins will go to the line, try to extend the Musketeer lead back to 10, 55-46 right now, 3.58 left in the game. First free throw is no good. So he missed his last two now. He sure has. Eli's uh, second free throw is good. 10-point lead. All right, we'll take that. 56-46, here comes Watts, three-pointer, no good. Rebound down underneath the basket. Uh, torn away, that, that rebound was by Blackburn. He threw it up and missed, and the foul's going to be called on Muncie. Muncie hoping to get the jump ball right there. He didn't get it. And with the situation we have with the fouls right now, we're going to head right back to the other end. I feel like I have a good feeling Greenup County is going to be shooting a lot of free throws the rest of the way. Right, right, for sure. Especially that new rule in effect. Wow. Casey Gammon going to the line for two shots. First one is good. Uh, yeah. That's a 10 of 13 so far tonight. That's a good percentage for Graham County. Gammon's second free throw is good. All right. 58-46. Here comes Parker Watts again. Watts crossover dribble to the baseline, throws it up, gets fouled again by Bradley Atkins, and he'll go to the line for two shots. Wow. 
Oh, well, Green kind of hasn't anything to stop him. Musketeers have given up some big games this year to some uh, really, really good players. Well, they sure have. Chase Copley at the top of that list, 37 points. Blake Reed had 22 on him. And so far, uh, Parker Watts. That was about 36, I believe. Uh, That's what I got. Here's Gammon. 58-48 Musketeers. They're going to pull it out and try to probably milk some clock here. There's a give to Underwood. Out top to Chanley. Chanley puts the ball on the ground. Gets it knocked away. Chanley picks it up. Out top to Underwood. He'll be patient. Good smart play by Cohen Underwood at this point. Felt like I faked that pass. Gammon puts the ball on the ground. And one of the walk call. He throws it up. Rebound down to who else? Parker Watts. Here comes Watts on the dribble. He throws up a 10-foot runner. No good. Rebound down to Mollett. Mollett goes up strong. Throws it in the air. Misses. Rebound down to Mollett again. He's the fullback. He comes away with it. Puts oh, it in for the that? end one. What a play by Bray Mollett for their first two points of this half. Not scored by Parker Watts. Well, I'll tell you what. you got to give him credit. He battled and battled and battled. For his size, getting there with the big boys and rebound like that, that's something else. 5'10", 220-pound Bray Mollett. We go to the line, try to make this a seven-point game, 58-50. Ethan Gibson checks into the game for Bradley Atkins. 2.52 left in the game. Bray Mollett's free throw is good. 58-51. There's a full time out on the floor. So, Brian, 58-51. <laughs> take it with him. No yeah, yeah, 2.52 left in this one. We'll be right back here on My Town TV. Something that made me want to work with Regroup was um, the relationships that I have with my colleagues. My leadership and my supervisors are always the first ones to be able to um, help me with anything and I love being able to be entrusted with the responsibilities that I have. But know that if I have problems that I'm able to go to either my fellow clinicians or colleagues or um, my leadership team to help me with any kind of problem. We're back here in Lloyd, Kentucky, home of the Greenup County Musketeers, where the Musketeers never disappoint us as far as the volume of excitement they provide. And they've made this one here interesting tonight. They have. They had a 20-plus point lead uh, for most of the game, really, uh, into the second quarter through the third quarter. But now Tulsa has cut this lead down to seven points, 58-51, with two minutes, 52 seconds left in the game. I mean, I like our chances. Don't get me wrong, but... Still, yeah. they've made it interesting. We've made it interesting. Here's Eli Atkins, gives it to Cohen Underwood. Underwood gets up to Chanley. Back to Underwood. Tulsa, little press here. Underwood over to Chanley. Quick passes here, guys. You got him wide open. There's Gammon. Puts it on the ground and gets fouled. He'll go to the line for two shots. You got Blackburn got him there. Cole Blackburn on the foul for Tulsa. Gammon, that's the guy we want at the line tonight. First free throw from Casey's up and in. 59-51, Greenup. Nice job. Gammon's second free throw is good. He's been 16 tonight. Yeah, good offensive night for Casey Gammon. 60 to 51. Parker Watts picks the ball up, 237 remaining. Watts thought about pulling up for a three. He drives through the lane, throws up a 10 footer. Good. What hang time. Just, you know, three defenders going to stop him. Underwood going to inbound the basketball for Greenham. Gets it in to Eli Atkins. Eli Atkins racing down the floor on the near side. Atkins drives the paint. Good pass down to Bradley Atkins for nice. two. Well, Bradley Atkins, nobody does a better job than him of sealing off the defender. 
They're going to remain aggressive on offense. Mollett pulls up for a long three. I don't think that was what they wanted there. Eli Atkins rebounds, and Robert Evans fouls. Eli Atkins will go to the line for two more free throws. All right, I like that. That's good for us. Boy, the new rule does make it such that uh, when you do get to this point in the game and fouls are happening every time, you're just watching free throws. Right, right. It's understandable. This is what it was made for right here. <clears throat> Two of four tonight from the line. Adkins' free throw is rolls in. 63-53. Green up on top by 10, 206. Green up in command of the game. They just let it be a little bit closer than it should have been. Well, Parker Watts has had something to do with that. Second free throw is good. Here's Watts in the backcourt being double teamed. Gammon and Adkins trying to stay with him. Watts 15 footer, no good this time. Rebound tipped out of there as Eli Adkins heads into the Tulsa cheerleaders. It's going to be Tulsa's ball, 64-53. I'd want to get it to Watts if I was Tulsa. They get it into Blackburn, down to Mollett. Mollett on the post, makes a move, throws it up. Doesn't go, wow. rebound to Chanley. Out to Eli Adkins, ahead to tipped away. Watts tipped it away. Gives it to Mollett. Mollett right side to Blackburn, down to Evans. Evans puts, uh, puts it on the ground, and Cohen Underwood tips it away. Eli Adkins comes up with it. Gonna have to be more aggressive on offense, you know, more decisive and aggressive sure. than the Musketeers are. This looks like we're, oh, just got shoved in the back wow. that time. Chanley, <laughs> straight shove from Robert Evans, the freshman. That's four I got on Evans. Chanley will go to the line for two free throws. Green up with an 11 point lead, 64-53. Two shots, that, that's good. Chanley's first free throw is up and in. His seventh point. 65-53. Musketeers have extended it back out to 12. Chanley taking his time and drops the second one in. 66-53. Here comes Watts. He's tripped up, but he, he goes down to the ground, but uh, no call. Uh, Casey Gammon all the way for the and one. Casey Gammon gets shoved, a technical foul. Well, he's going to call a technical foul on both players this time. And that's but, the right thing, I guess. You know. I would assume the basket is going to count. The, the basket, the technical foul occurred after, after the whole sequence of play. So Gammon's uh, basket will count. That's 18 points for him tonight. Gammon will get the free throw for the and one. And we'll see how it goes from there. 68-53. Green up with a 15-point lead. Gammon's free throw is good. 69-53. He's been perfect from the line. 7-7 seven seven for Gammon. How about that? Referees trying to convene to decide whether they're going to give technical free throws or are we just going to call it a wash and give somebody the ball on the baseline? Yeah, I think that's what they're talking about. Yeah, 19 points for game, and that leads the Musketeers. Here we go. They're going to take the technical free throws now, so I guess each team will have technical free throws, and then we'll see who gets the ball. Eli Atkins steps to the line for Greenup County. Atkins' first free throw is good. Coach Allison showing confidence in Eli Atkins, sending him help him up for the technical free throws. I like that. I just think Gammon, but. Here we go. The referees convene again. Just make sure that this is legal, I suppose. <laughs> What's going on? Eli Atkins going to try another one here from the line. It's good. 71 to 53. Now they'll head to the other end where Tulsa will take their technical free throws. 71-53. That sounds good to me. Tulsa going to send Cole Blackburn to the line for the technical free throws. He's one of, he's one of two. So he's not.
Here we go. Well, Blackburn was the player. <laughs> Had a lot of complexity in rules here. Blackburn was the player who picked up the technical. So he can't shoot. He, and, and it was his fifth foul. I saw the official scorekeeper stand up and say it was his fifth foul. Oh, so he yeah. technically fouled out of the game. Technically fouled out of the game. I like that. <laughs> You're working so, it. So they're going to have to come up with somebody else to shoot the free throws, I do believe. And I would imagine that would be Parker Watts. Uh, I had him with four fouls. I'm going to be a fifth. Yeah. Hmm. A lot of discussion being had at the scorer's table right now. A minute 17 left in this one. The result is academic, I believe. Greenup County has an 18-point lead. Right. And, you know, but hats off to Tulsa. They, they played a great second half. Oh, Charged back a, in this thing. They yeah. never gave up. And Parker Watts, he's an all-star. Man, he is a bulldog in every sense of the way. Just like Mollett. Mollett, he's, he really impressed me tonight with his size and able to get there and play the big boys and rebound and get in there and mix it up. Well, for whatever reason, Tulsa is not going to get the free throws. We get the ball out, though. And for whatever reason, they've taken Greenham County's points from the free throws off the board, Brian. 69-53, not 71-53 now. Oh, okay. So who knows? Here's Parker Watts with the basketball, drives the lane. He gets tripped down to the ground. He's picked up by Chanley. They're hanging on to his leg underneath the basket there. Hey, that's got to be an intentional foul there. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> I mean, when you're hanging on, when you're pulling the, uh, who, who is it, Jeff Van Gundy Van and Alonzo Gundy. Mourning? Yeah. <laughs> at the bottom of the pile. <laughs> yeah, that was, you know, and the one before that, that push in the back was pretty obvious. I mean, to me, intentional fouls, when you intentionally commit a foul, that was intentional. And That's they, about they, as they, intentional they, as it gets right I'm not there. Sure if they called that or not. Maybe not. We can kind of back at half court there. So I, I assume from the scoreboard, 69-53, we, we take Eli Atkins' final, last two free throws off the board. I guess they decided nobody was going to shoot free throws. Chanley misses this one. They Comes both up. were bad boys. So 69-53 is our score. A minute nine remaining in this one. Oh, Parker. Chanley's first miss. In the line. He straightens things out the second time. 70-53. to 53. Watts is out of the game now. Mollett will take his place. Pull up and take the 25-footer. Chandley rebounds. Let's see if we can just dribble this one out. Not sure. Casey Gammon brings it over the timeline. Yeah, yeah. I believe what's going to happen here. They're under a minute. Those Tulsa kids played tough, man. They played hard. They did. Tulsa showing a lot of competitive spirit here tonight. And Parker Watts showing yeah. a lot of the ability that we had seen earlier yeah. in the yeah, season. And if, yeah, and if Watts could have got a little bit of help there and not run. Now, who knows what could have happened right there. It got kind of interesting for sure. But like I said, that one break, he needed somebody to help him out. 38 seconds left in this one. Coach Corey Allison takes a timeout, a 30-second timeout. He just took the timeout to get all the reserves in the game. Right. So into the game for Greenup comes number 20, Landry Lewis. Number 13, Hunter Holbrook. Number five, Sawyer Hatfield. And who's going to be playing with him? It's going to be Hayden Plummer. And Gavin Harrington. Good little JV team out there. We have our all six foot and under team in there right now. It's Hatfield, Holbrook, Lewis, and Plummer. 5'7, 5'8, 5'9, and 5'7. Wow. Everybody else on the roster is over six foot. Small ball. Small ball indeed. Lewis gives it over to Holbrook, to Harrington, to Plummer. Plummer out top to Hatfield. Hatfield dribbles. Gives it to Lewis. To Plummer. Looks like they're just going to dribble it out here. As Evans goes for the steal. Hatfield on the dribble. Right side to Plummer. Good effort there by Robert Evans. And Greenham County is going to win this basketball game by a score of 70 to 53 at the greenhouse tonight. We'll be right back with the SOMC postgame show. Give you the stats and tell you about what's coming up for the Musketeers next. Better banking brings better opportunity. If you're looking for a loan, I encourage you to shop local. At Kentucky Farmers Bank, we make our decisions right here in our office. We give you the loans that you need and the personal service that you deserve. Kentucky Farmers Bank, member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. 
we take pride in our schools. And at King's Daughters, we take pride in being part of the team. With student athlete care from the sidelines to our comprehensive orthopedics program. With walk-in hours in Ashland and Portsmouth that make seeing a provider easier than ever. Our team is delivering faster diagnosis and treatment, getting our student athletes back in the game and back to what they do best. Orthopedics at King's Daughters. Hi, I'm Clay with Pollock Strulers, and this uh, school season we want to wish all of our local teams the, the best. We want you to know that we're here for you in any of your gift giving needs. And uh, good luck to everyone this fall and next spring. Back here from the greenhouse, I'm Ryan Parker along with Brian Barber. Greenham County Musketeers have won this game 70 to 53 to go four and four on the season after two weeks of basketball. It was a good win for the Musketeers tonight. Good to level set the record as we go into next week. Right again, one of them games at Greenham County, they uh, they earned this victory tonight. Uh, that tough fought game there in the second half. Tulsa came back, made a charge with a, a super sensation Parker Watts. Wow, what a player he is. He's yeah. missing 39 points. Wow, what a night for him. But again, Greenham County contains their composure and they win this thing going away. Yeah, Tulsa, you know, led by Parker Watts with 39. Robert Evans had five. Ray Mollett had four points tonight. Evan Ball with three. And Cole Blackburn rounded out the scoring for Tulsa with two points. They ended up with 53. Greenup County was led in scoring by Casey Gammon with 19 points. Eli Atkins had 16. Bryson Chanley with nine. Two players with eight tonight. It was Ethan Gibson and Cohen Underwood. Mm -hmm. R.J. Veach had six points and Bradley Atkins with four. Yeah, so, I, I like seeing Veach score right there. Good, good to see him come off tonight and get six points. That's good. Yeah, good to see R.J. Veach get in there, get some offensive action tonight. Uh, you know, lo lots of good players on this Greenup County team, and you never know who's going to be called upon any given night, and especially as the season wears on. Lots of these players that we, you know, we may least expect may step up in the biggest moments. Right. You know, I think some of the fans are probably a little bit frustrated. They let, they let you know, this team back in it. But you know what? At the end of the day, they pulled away and won. And they deserve the win. And they're back, back at a 500. So let's keep it going. Yeah. So join us. Myself and Brian will be over in Wheelersburg on Tuesday night on My Town Radio. That'll be the next game for the Musketeers as we and the Musketeers get a well-deserved break. That's right. Finally, uh, they get Saturday, Sunday, Monday off. That's so right. Three in a row for us, too. First wow. time they've had three days off in, uh, since the beginning of the season. Yeah, it's been fun so far. You, I tell you what, we could have got a better assignment this season. I love it. Yeah, looking forward to going over to Wheelersburg, where, where I'm sure it will be a rocking environment, a loud, raucous environment on Tuesday night. Uh, and Wheelersburg will definitely be ready for the Musketeers. All right, we can do it. We sure can. So for Josh Pack in the production and uh, Marcus Reed on the camera, Brian Barber on the color commentary, I'm Ryan Parker. Thank you for joining us. Musketeers win tonight. Catch us next time on My Town TV. Good evening, everybody. It's tailgate time in the bluegrass. Uncle, Uncle Rick, Rick, what are you doing? doing? I'm getting ready to make my announcing debut. And I believe that's football time in the bluegrass. But you can believe this, Clark's has everything you need for a winning tailgate. Whether it's ice and cold drinks, chips and dips, or homemade sandwiches, and crispy, crunchy chicken for everybody, Clark's has you covered. And you don't even have to leave your car thanks to our convenient drive through Clark's Pump and Shop. Return. Refresh. Refuel.
Visit the Ashland Boyd County Health Department to catch up on routine childhood vaccines such as MMR, Tdap, HPV, and hepatitis. Please call 606-324-7181 to schedule an appointment. Stand under the mistletoe, put presents under the tree. But if you drive under the influence, you could end up under arrest. Drive sober or get pulled over. I felt like I didn't matter at my past job and Regroup helps me to feel like I am important and that I have meaning and purpose. If you really want to feel like you are important um, and feel like you want a home, um, some place that you can talk to anybody about anything, I think Regroup is the place for you to work. Like we're a team and we're a family and I feel just like I'm welcomed here and I'm loved here and I feel like I matter here.